Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this fragrance right here. Oriental Leather from the house of Memo Paris. This fragrance was sent to me for review by TwistedLily.com, so shout out to Twisted Lily. In case you're unaware of them, they're a great spot for picking up niche fragrances, and you can use the code GENTS10 to get 10% off of any fragrance or sample or whatever you want to buy from their website. As always, that does not affect what I'm going to tell you about this one, whether I like it or not. I'm going to let you know everything about this, the pros and the cons, and we're going to check out this presentation as well. So let's jump into it. What do you say we go ahead and start off with the presentation? Yeah, that's crazy. We never start with the presentation. First off, we've got the box, and this is a little postcard that actually serves as the front of the box. I've got the bottom cut so that I could actually get the box open and take the fragrance out, but this is a postcard. All of the Memo fragrances have these. So I'll show you how this looks on the other side in just a moment. At the top, you've got an M for Memo, and then on the back, name of the fragrance house once again. It's wrapped in what I imagine is faux leather, but it does feel nice to the touch. On the bottom, got your ingredient information, got your badge code, and it is 0L18029. Opens up like so, and then the fragrance actually sits right inside like that. And this is cardboard, so there's no foam or anything like that make this feel nice and luxurious. It's, uh, it's just cardboard. Still nice though. And then on the other side of your postcard, you've got some information about the fragrance, a few pictures, and then your note breakdown, along with three little lines. I imagine nobody is actually going to use this as a postcard. I don't even know that that would be a good idea. Nah, I don't think so. And then here is the bottle, 75 mil size. It's got this metallic plaque on the front, which looks very nice. Each one of the Memo fragrances has these, and I think they're just, Awesome, love, love, love the presentation. The cap slides into place, does not click into place, as you can see right there. Again, you have that same little M and star on the top of the cap. And then on the bottom, you've got your sticker with your batch code, and I'll go ahead and waste the spray for you guys here. Alrighty, here we go. A couple sprays for you. The Mimo atomizers are so-so. They're not great, they're not terrible. At Twisted Lily, this is gonna run you $300 for this size bottle, 75 mils. So these fragrances, they're not cheap. So how does this smell? Is it worth it or not? When you first spray this one on, it's got a warm, spicy feeling to it and it has kind of a, a vegetal edge to it. So it's got this green, almost earthy vibe underneath the warmth and the spices. That being said, that vegetal feel, it's only there for a little bit a few moments really, within five minutes, that part of the fragrance has gone away, which in this circumstance is a good thing. It does have a little bit of an old school vibe to it at times. That's gonna be because of the lavender that's right up in the front of the fragrance pretty early on. You have all these different spicy facets going on. So there's lavender and then just a ton of different spicy notes just popping here and there. Sometimes I pick up a little bit of pimento where I can you know, really catch a whiff of it. And I'm like, okay, okay, there's the pimento. I get that. And then sometimes I'll get a little bit of anise, same kind of thing. It'll pop out for a second, become more noticeable when I'm smelling and be like, okay, there's that. But for the most part, it's just this really nicely blended spicy mix. Lots of different spices doing their own things, but working together to the point that usually you can't really pick one out all that much more than the other. And then it has this sort of slightly sweet, muted dustiness underneath the spices. That's the best way for me to describe it. Probably doesn't tell you a whole heck of a lot, but <laughs> it doesn't really shine through. It has this sort of, I wouldn't call it powdery, but like I said, dusty sort of nature to it where you smell it and it kind of tickles your nose a little bit and it's just ever so slightly sweet. And that is underneath all those spices and that lavender. As it settles down, you get more benzoin, you get more vanilla, and that actually takes that dusty sweetness from you know the, the bottom of the fragrance where you're really not smelling it all that much and kind of moves it up a little bit more where you can pick it up a little bit easier. And yes, this fragrance is named Oriental Leather. I haven't mentioned any leather yet. Is there leather in the fragrance? 
Yeah, yeah, there is. It comes across smelling more like a dark suede sort of leather note. So that mixes together with the resins, mixes together with the spices. It's always there, but it's not really overly prominent. If this was not named Oriental Leather and you didn't tell people, hey, this is a leather fragrance and you gave it to them to wear and to smell, they may not pick up on the leather so much, depending on how familiar they are with niche fragrances. More than likely, they're gonna get that warmth and that spice, and as it dries down, the benzoin, the vanilla, they're gonna pick that up. Uh, the leather, where it blends with everything, uh, sometimes it's like it's lost in the mix. I don't mean that as a bad thing though. Like I said, for me, I can always pick up that dark suede sort of leather feel that it has. It's just not leather here, all the other notes here. It's leather here, all the other notes right here with it. And into the dry down, this takes on kind of an incense-y feel to me. So I get this little bit of smoke, like an incense sort of smoke. It's not a note in the fragrance, but I do pick that up. It's not heavy, it's more like little puffs, like a little puff of incense here or there. And in that far dry down, when you are getting those puffs of incense, it's still warm, but not as spicy as in the opening and the mid and the first part of the dry down. The spices kind of fade away once you get uh, really far into the dry down of the scent. And the patchouli in this fragrance never really comes out all that much for me. It's there, but it's not really all that noticeable. Maybe it contributes a little bit to that earthy feeling that you get early on, but once you hit the dry down, for me anyway, I don't get a whole bunch of patchouli. Now, as far as when you would use this fragrance, fall and winter. Not a springtime fragrance, not a summertime fragrance for me at all. And one thing as well that I really need to let you guys know about, this smells so much better in cold weather. It really truly does. If you're in air conditioning, like you're at the office wearing this one, which I don't really think of this as an office fragrance, but we'll get to that in a second. Or you're you know, in your house, somebody else's house, you're out on the town and you're going into places that are air conditioned, it smells fine. But when you're out in the cold, when you're outdoors and it is chilly and the wind is blowing, Oriental leather smells so much better, way better. There's something about this fragrance, the DNA in here, that when you are in extreme cold and this kind of cuts through that cold and you get hit with that warming spice, that little bit of sweetness and everything else that's going on here, it works. The fragrance just really, really sings in situations like that. So if you know you're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna be outdoors a little bit more or you're gonna be somewhere where it's very cold, this one is a killer. It smells great. In air conditioning, it's not bad, but in the cold, good. It does lean night use for me, so I'm more of a nighttime fragrance than a daytime fragrance. It's a good casual scent. It's a good potential night out fragrance, not a fragrance that I think I would wear to the office ever. And since I can't see myself wearing it to the office, obviously, that means I wouldn't be wearing it in business type situations. And I think if I were going to wear something or go somewhere rather formal, I would reach for something different. Let's talk about performance really quickly. Longevity, eight plus hours, really nice. Lasts a long time on your skin, lasts even longer on clothes. It will last a long, long time on your clothes. And as far as projection, above average, really nice projector, two plus hours. So obviously I like this fragrance. The spicy warmth is really nice. I like the blend here. I like what this fragrance is doing. I especially, like I said, love it outdoors in the cold. But where does this one measure up with the other fragrances in the leather line from Mimo? For me, actually toward the bottom. I would for sure, for sure, take African leather, which is my favorite of the line over this one. I would take Irish leather over this one. I would take Italian leather over this one. I would take Russian leather over this one. And Moroccan leather, it's kind of, right there with this one. I don't own Ocean Leather yet, the newest, so can't speak to that one. And uh, French Leather, I think I'd take that over this one too. So while I'm really glad to have this one, really glad, because it plugs a hole in this line that I didn't have, I don't think that it's up there with the best in the line or from the house. I'm not enthralled with the fragrance. Like I said, I think it's good. But realistically, the only time I'll wear it is when it's really cold out, and I want something that's gonna cut through that cold with some nice, really warming spice. I'll reach for this. So while this one is a thumbs up for me overall, I think that you should check out 
the earlier releases in the line first if you're unfamiliar with the line. So African leather, Irish leather, Russian leather, Italian leather, French leather. Check those out first. Again, shout out to Twisted Lily. There's a link in the description to Twisted Lily and use my code GENTS10 anytime you shop on Twisted Lily. Get yourself 10% off of whatever it is you're buying. Again, everything on the website. 10% off. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know if you've smelled any Memo fragrances and if you have, which ones are your personal favorites? I know this one's mine, but some people don't actually like this one as much as me because they think it's a little, a little safe, a little designer-ish as far as niche fragrances go. But for me, the wearability here absolutely kills it. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.